Today I'm going to be telling you about a cropping system that can help you to improve your productivity. It can help you to improve your yield by not necessarily uh, adding so much fertilizer, increasing the level of fertilizer you'll be adding. It can help you to fight pests and diseases on your farm without spraying chemicals here and there, fighting diseases, fighting pests. It can also help you to improve your soil structure and your soil properties such as pH, uh, soil microbial activity and so much and so on. We have different cropping system but this particular one I'm about to be talking about in this video is a special one and uh, is a very very spectacular one when it comes to productivity and sustainability. We have, we have intercropping, we have relay cropping, we have mix cropping, we have strip cropping, but crop rotation is the master of them all. And on today's episode, I'm going to be talking about what exactly is crop rotation, what are the advantages of crop rotation, and how you can practice crop rotation on your farm and the principle guiding crop rotation. So let's get to it. What is crop rotation? Crop rotation basically in layman's time is the planting of different type of crop in a sequential manner on a piece of land. Simple as ABC. There's no need to be blowing grammar around. So um, the benefit of crop rotation is that it helps in so many ways it's a system that can improve the fertility of your soil uh, it's a system that can help you to break the life cycle of pests on your farm and the diseases on your farm it's also a system that can help you in improving the soil structure the soil property and the entire soil health on your farm and all these properties, all these advantages has been proven over time. It's a long time proven strategy. So uh, in essence, let me just give a brief illustration on how you can practice uh, crop rotation on your farm. So crop rotation basically, before I go to how you can design a crop rotation plan on your farm. I would like to talk about the principle guiding this process, the principle guiding this system. One of the basic principles is that, you know, we have different type and different family of crop. So one of the basic principles is that uh, two family of crop, two crops belonging to the same class or to the same family must not follow each other. Another proper, another principle guiding it is that when you are doing your crop rotation plan, uh, a shallow rooted crop must follow a deep rooted crop. Another principle is that a an exhaustive plant, uh, I mean plants that take away a whole lot of nutrients from the soil, must be followed with another class or type of crop that replenish nutrients into the soil and another properties uh, another principle guiding this process is that you don't plant the same type of crop in a sequential order so let's benefit of this system assuming this is your land this is your farmland you now divide it into four when you divide it into four this is the first plot this is the second plot this is the third plot and this is the fourth plot so what we are trying to do now is that we will be apportioning crop to each of the plot instead of you planting maize over the place here in year out what will happen after some time when you plant maize continuously on a piece of land not only means when you plant a particular type of crop continuously on the particular pieces of land is that 
there will be diseases and pests build up on that farm. And don't forget, a particular crop have a kind of nutrient that they desire the most. So nitrogen, which is the favorite for maize, will be depleted on this farm. And along the line, maybe after the third or the fourth year, your productivity will reduce and you will have pests build up because the whole world is an ecosystem. The pests that will attack maize, they will know definitely, okay, every year this farmer used to plant maize. So they will lay their eggs, they will create a colony on your farm. So anytime as you are planting your maize, they are hatching and they are attacking your farm. So you will be having a whole lot of pest issues to be handling. So that is what we want to break in this system. So let's say in the first plot, in the first plot, this is the first year, for example. This is the first year. So let's say you plant maize. Maize, or you are planting millet. Millet, or you are planting So, so what we now follow in the sec in the second year will be something like cowpea, cowpea, uh, soya bean. You see, or let me say maybe another thing melon. You get so uh, in the third year you see this first uh, plot all the crop I listed here they are cereals all the crops I listed here are leguminous crops so let's say in the third year you plant uh, in the third plot you plant um, yam Cassava, uh, Kukuyam, or oh, let me see, potatoes. Are we together? So in the in the in the fourth plot, we'll be having something like. Um, Tomatoes or chili pepper or mm, what again? Okra or or spinach. Or, or cucumber. So you can see the pests and diseases that we attack maize or millet or sorghum. They are in the same family. They share the same pests and diseases. And most likely they have the same nutrient requirement. So the pest that will attack this one will not be the pest that will attack this. The pest that will attack this will not be the pest that will attack these classes of crop. The pest that will attack this one will not be the same. But in the same family, they share the same pest and they share the same nutrient requirement. So this is the first year. So the second year will be something like something like this. Then the third year will be something like this. So now this first plot. In the second year, you will not be planting maize, millet, or sorghum. So what will be planted will now be cowpea. Cowpea or soya bean.
you see, or melon. Then on the second plot, instead of you planting this, you planting this one here. Yam. Cassava. Or cocoa. Any of them. Or potatoes. So now we have this tomatoes. Chili pepper. Uh, spinach. Then on the fourth plot, you have in this miss uh, millet so gone. So, in the third year, what we'll be having will look like this we'll be having yam here or cassava. Or potatoes then on the second plot in the third year you'll be having um, tomatoes or spinach or chili or okra then you'll be having maize maize or millet or sorghum uh, or now in the you now bring this one here cowpea cowpea or soya bean or melon So another principle of crop, crop rotation is that in the sequence or in the circle, you must have a leguminous plant, a leguminous crop. The uh, ideology behind this is that leguminous crop are fixed, nitrogen fixing plant. They tend to improve the nutrients of the soil or the fertility of the soil. They also help in uh, preventing the soil from erosion. So, in this kind of something, you have all classes of crop represented. Cassava or planting yam will help in improving your soil structure. They help in improving the hydration of your soil. Whereby, uh, maize, uh, whereby cowpea or soya bean, they help in fixing uh, nitrogen into your soil. While this, all these ones, uh, maize, millet or something, they also help in one way or the other. The whole essence of, about it is that when you have different same type of crop and you are rotating them in a sequential manner, you will not be having pest infestation on your farm. Because on the first plot, instead of you planting the same thing the second year, you've already brought another set of crop on the farm and they don't share the symptom. Even if those pests have already laid egg on your farm, they will not be surviving because you already introduced another type of crop to it. So this is the beauty and the benefits of crop rotation. With this, I've come to the end of today's topic and I hope you got value one way or the other. If you actually got value from this video, kindly give it a like, share with your friends and give it a like. See you on my next video. Thank you so much.